Okay guys, so welcome sa ating Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. So para sa ating unang topic, uh, ito yung tinatawag na rectilinear translation. Okay, so what is about rectilinear translation? So basahin muna natin, uh, kinematics of a particle. So I believe this was already discussed to you last time, so introduction to dynamics. So in this session, you will get to know more about the concepts of dynamics of rigid bodies and other engineering science. By the end of this session, you should be able to so introduce the concepts of position, displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. So mechanics is that branch of the physical science concerned with the behavior of bodies subjected to the action of forces. The subject of mechanics is, is divided into two parts. So, ito nga. So, dyan papasok si statics and dynamics. So, because of the laws of, uh, the three laws of motion in Newton. So, ayan nga. Nabuo si mechanics. And then, yung mechanics, it has its two divisions. So, statics of rigid bodies and dynamics of rigid bodies. So, again, statics, this is the study of objects in equilibrium. So, object either at rest or moving with a constant velocity. While dynamics is a study of objects with accelerated motion. So, the subject of dynamics is often itself divided into two parts. So, meron nga ulit ang kinematics. So, ang kinematics, it treats only the geometric aspect of the motion. So, wala tayong pakalam doon sa force na nag-cause para gumalaw yung object na ina-analyze natin. And for kinetics, this is the analysis of forces causing the motion. So, again, ang unang pinitinitis ka sa dynamic of rigid bodies is yung kinematics because yung kinematics is a prerequisite ng kinetics. So, let's proceed with the other terminology. So, again, particle. So, this is an object of point size. Again, ito yung na-discuss na natin last time. And a body. So, a system of particle which from form an object of appreciable size. So let's define what is like rectilinear kinematics. So this refers to a straight line motion. So the kinematics of a particle is characterized by specifying at any given inst instant the particle's position, velocity, and acceleration. So let's define guys uh, these terms, uh, position, the velocity, and the acceleration. So para sa position, so when you look at this diagram, ayan, basta na the So the straight line path of a particle will be defined using a single coordinate axis, S. Okay? So itong S na to. So the origin on the path is a fixed point, Oh, so ito yung origin natin, okay? So hindi lang naipakita dito sa diagram, pero, pero ito yung ating origin. And then, yung S nga, ito yung position coordinate niya. So this is specify the location of the particle at any given instant. So the magnitude of S is the distance from point O to the particle. So coming from an initial point, ito ang origin niya. So ito yung final location niya. And yung magnitude na yan, ito, yung magnitude S na yan, so ito yung distansya ng O from point O to the particle. Okay? So ito na yung location ng particle mo. So usually measured in meters or feet and the sense of direction is defined by the algebraic sign of S. So although the choice is arbitrary, in this case, S is positive since the coordinate axis is positive to the right of the origin. So ito palang axis nyo guys, or yung origin mo, itreated mo rin siya as your, yung parang x and y axis. Kung saan, if yung S mo is papunta dito sa kaliwa, therefore, that will be negative S. And then since ito is papunta sa kanan, so kaya daw siya ay naging positive. So yan, so sinabi naman dyan. So likewise, it is negative if the particle is located to the right of O. So realize that position is a vector quantity since it has both magnitude and direction. Here, however, it is being represented by the algebraic scalar S, rather than in bold phase S since the direction always remains along the coordinate axis. Next, we define naman natin yung uh, displacement. Ano ba displacement ba na tinatawag? So this, the displacement of the particle is designed or defined as a change in its position, delta S. So and delta S mo, that is just the difference of your S prime and yung I yung S. Ayan. Okay? So ano lang yan? Difference lang itong dalawa. So, velocity. What is velocity? So, velocity, if the particle moves through a displacement during the time interval, the average velocity of the particle during this time interval is the average velocity, velocity is equal to delta S over delta T. Instantaneous velocity is a vector defined as V is equal to dS all over dT. Since delta T or dT is always positive, so yung change in time mo naman, lagi naman siyang positive, wala naman tayong negative time. So, the sign used to define the sense of the velocity is the same as that of delta S or dS. So, particle moving to the right, the velocity is positive. So, parang yung kanina din, hindi ba may origin tayo. So, pag papunta siya sa kanan, the velocity is positive. And kapag papunta sa aliwa, so that is considered as negative. So, the magnitude of the velocity is known as the speed or the average speed. And it is generally expressed in the units of meter per second for SI or feet per second in English. The average speed is always positive scalar and is defined as the total distance traveled by a particle divided by the elapsed time. So, in total distance, if you're going to consider this uh, diagram, so ito yung total length nitong uh, line na ito. Ayan. Kung gano'ng kahaba yan, so ayan yung magiging ST natin for the total distance travel. And then yung delta T, again, this is always positive naman. Ayan. So ito yung another equation natin for this uh, discussion. Next, uh, let's define naman what is acceleration. So provided the velocity of a particle is known at two points, the average acceleration of the particle during the time interval is defined as delta V over delta T. Kung saan yung delta V mo is just the difference between the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So, yung inyong average acceleration, so that will be positive if yung final velocity mo is greater than the initial velocity. Because there are some cases na yung average mo is negative. So, kapag negative siya, ang acceleration, eh, 
pwede mo siyang ma-define as deceleration eh. Okay? Or sa pabagal na yung motion ng isang body na ina-analyze. So, while instantaneous, acceleration at time t, so that is dv over dt lang. So, that is also the double derivative, yung d squared s over dt squared. So, paitandaan na lang guys ng mga equation na ako box kasi kakailangan natin, kakailangan din natin siya mamaya kapag nag-derive tayo ng mga equation dito sa topic na to. Okay? So, Ayan, knowing that d is equal to ds over dt and the acceleration as dv over dt. So, if we're going to relate the term in terms of dt, so ito yung mabubuong equation. Ayan, so algebraic manipulation lang. So, ito itataas mo and then yung, sorry, gamitin tayo na lang. So, ito itataas mo lang yung dt. Magpapalit lang sila ng position. The same as, same goes for this uh, dt and acceleration. Okay? So, therefore, ds all over d. So, equate mo lang yung dalawang dt. Ayan. So, equate mo lang itong dalawa. So, let's just say this is equation 1 and this is our equation 2. So, ito yung lalabas. Ano? D S L over D is equal to D V over A. Where A D S is equal to V D V. Again, uh, please remind again of this relationship. So, mamaya gagamitin natin siya sa next uh, rectilinear translation. So, what is translation? So, it's defined as the motion of a rigid body in which a straight line passing through any point always remains parallel to its initial position. So, the term translation cannot be applied to a non-rigid body such as a liquid or gas because the position of the separate particles cannot be controlled. So, the particles may and usually do follow independent paths. So, dito pala siya pwede sa ano? Sa liquid or gas. Okay? So, translation may either rectilinear or curvilinear depending upon whether the path described by any particle is straight or curved. So, kaya pala tawag is rectilinear translation and curvilinear translation or yung projectile motion. Okay, so constant acceleration. Ayan guys, uh, ipinakita na dito yung derivation natin. So, ang gagawin natin, i-derive natin siya uh, using the relationship na nakuha natin dito. Ito. So, ito kailangan din natin. Ito. So, yun lang. At saka ito. Okay, so ipakita natin kung paano ba madi-drive yung mga formulas that we are going to use for rectilinear translation. Okay guys, so i-drive natin yung mga formulas na gagamitin natin for rectilinear translation. So again, alam natin guys that ang acceleration mo is equals to dv all over dt. So ito sa, ito, sa, ito, sa, ito sa equation na gagamitin natin. And then we all know that yung velocity mo, so dv equals lang sa ds over dt. This is our second equation. And relating this to equation in terms of dt, so when you rewrite that, so unahin natin yung equation number 1. Dv equals siya sa dv all over dt. And considering the equation number 2, so that will be dt is equal to ds all over d. So when you equate these two equations, yung dt is equal to dt. So we will arrive at an equation of dv all over a is equal to ds all over d. Okay? So therefore, v dv is just equal to a ds. So we will name this as our equation number 3. So let's start first for equation number 1. So using equation number 1, so acceleration is equal to dv all over dt. So, when you cross-multiply this and you solve for dv, so, diba dv, so, inano ko lang natin, palit ko lang ng position yung dalawa, is a dt. So, this time, I will take integral of both sides. So, since acceleration is constant, so, if I factor out na natin siya, we will consider this as a constant. Again, ano ba yung ating limits for dv or for the velocity? So, may natatala ng tawag ng initial velocity, so, designated by v sub o, and on some books, that is vi, okay? So, and then, final velocity, so, v sub f. And for time, so, alam naman natin at time is, yung una time natin is always at zero, and then yung upper limit, so that is at a certain time, t. So, when we take the integral of this, so diba, integral of dv, so that will be just equals to v, and the limits of that is from initial velocity up to the final velocity. And for dt, so that will be just equals to a times t, and then the limits of that is from zero to t. Okay, so ano ba yung ginagawa natin kapag sa limit? So, diba, yung upper limit minus yung lower limit. And, eto, so since itong upper limit, so a times t, and then minus a times its lower limit, which is equal to zero. So therefore, I can cancel out this one. So therefore, if you're going to solve for bf, so transpose mo lang yung negative b sub o, so that will be initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So this will be our, one of the equations that we're going to use for rectilinear translation. So let's name this as our... Okay, so isulitin naman natin yung equation number 2. So dito lang natin siguro isulat. And so using equation number 2, so we will derive another formula using equation number 2. Okay, so for this, that is v is equal to ds all over dt. So if we're going to solve for ds, so that will be v dt. Now, yung v dito, or yung velocity dyan, uh, we will take that v as our final velocity. So meaning, we will substitute the value of uh, this equation letter a into this equation. So that will be vo plus a t dt. Okay? So again, I'll take the integral of both sides. So on some books, ito, uh, yung lower limit niya is nilalagyan niya ng value ng s of o, o ito yung initial, uh, uh, initial displacement. Pero ang gagawin natin yung ano, conventional na kusan ito is S, this is 1, is your O. Okay, so uh, zero. So para lang din hindi na malito. So pwede mo naman gamitin yun. Um, ano lang, pwede mo rin naman siyang isolve uh, by analysis. Ano. So later on, mas maunawaan yung sinasabi ko kapag nagsolve tayo mga problems. And then ito, so at time zero. And then at a time t. So when you take the integral of this, uh, so S, magiging S lang yan. So from limits of zero to distance S. 
Okay? So, this one, so VO, integral ng VO. So, ito magkaaroon lang ng T. So, VO multiply by T. So, integral of VO, DT. So, mag i lang to. So, again, from 0 to T. And then, plus, so A, integral ng AT. So, magiging ano to, di ba? Plus 1. So, or that will be A, T squared, tapos divided by the exponent, 2. So, from 0 to T. So, that will be S minus 0 is equals to yung T dito, papata mo lang. So, that will be VO, T minus VO, minus lower limit, ha? multiply by 0. So, I can cancel out this one. And then, AT squared, so plus A, T squared all over 2. And then, minus A times 0 squared all over 2. So, that is equals to 0. So, our final equation, so, i-write lang natin to. So, that will be S is equals to VOT uh, plus 1 half. So, pinaktor out ko lang yung 1 half. Kasi ito yung mas tanda natin formula, AT squared. Alright, so, dyan lang na-derive yung formula yan, eh. And then, for equation number 3. Oh, so, pangalanan natin to as P. So, using this equation 3, so, ito ang mangyayari sa kanya. So, V, DV is equals to A, DS. Okay, so just take the integral of this both sides. Again, factor out ko na lang yung A since the velocity is constant. Again, with the limits of initial velocity, final velocity. And then this one, so 0 to S. So integral of V dV, so that will be V squared all over 2. So with the limits of initial velocity and final velocity. And then this one, so that will be A divided by S, the limits of 0 to S. So I will just factor out this one half. So bahala na dito si V squared. Ayan. And then equals to A, S from 0 to S. So taas ko lang to. Dadaling ko doon. Okay. So, ano kong mangyayari dito? So, upper limit, so that will be Bf squared minus the lower limit, the O squared, is equals to, so, cross-multiply ko lang, tataas doon, 2As. So, ibig sabihin, if you're going to solve for the final velocity, that will be Bf squared, is equals to VO squared, so plus 2As. So, guys, ito na yung tatlong equation ng rectilinear translation. Ayan, so, just in case lang na hindi siya mas ulo, as long as alam mo itong tatlong equation na ito, you can derive these three formulas. So, para lang din na rin na mag-derive na mag-derive, so, alawin nyo na lang ito. Ano? Pero just in case, guys, na makalimutan or mamental block kayo or baka alamabas lang din sa exam, derive the formula for this rectilinear translation na formulas. So, madali naman siyang i-derive. Ano? Okay, guys. So, take a screenshot or copy first. Then, ito naman is nasa module nyo. Ano? So, ito lang yung ano ko, version ko na pag-derive. Pero yun na rin yun. So, again, ang ginamit nga lang sa module nyo is yung lower limit nga for displacement S. So, nilalagyan nila ng value ng S of O o ito yung initial position ng iyong uh, particle or object na, or body na ina-analyze. Pero para lang din, hindi na malito ito kasi eh, ito na yung gagamitin natin eh. Tapos i-add mo na lang yung initial position kung meron man. Okay, so let's proceed with the problem solving. Okay, guys, so this is a problem for rectilinear translation. So let's start with problem number one. So basahin natin yung problem. On a certain stretch of track, a train runs at 60 miles per hour. So how far back of a stop train should the warning torpedo is placed to signal an oncoming train? Assume that the brakes are applied at once and retard the train at a uniform rate of 2 feet per second squared. So guys, nag-search ako ano ba tong warning torpedo na pinatawag. So guys, ito is isang device kung saan nilalagay siya dun sa uh, rail ng train. So sumasabog talaga to. Ano? So a railway detonator torpedo in North America. So this is a coin-sized device that is used as a loud warning signal to train drivers. So it is placed on top of the rail, usually secured with two lead straps one of each side. So when the wheel of the train passes over it, it explodes emitting a loud bang. So ito yung nagsisignal para sa mga train drivers para mag-apply ng brakes dahil meron maaaring marapit sila sa intersection or malapit ng dumaan or tumigil or marating niya yung dulo ng uh, relays ng train. Okay, so the good thing about here, so papalabasin natin yung sagot. So ang answer daw is 747.48 feet. But the problem here, guys, is kung mapapansin nyo yung mga units natin. So, ito is na a miles per hour and ito is 2 feet per second squared. So, we need to convert this uh, velocity niya, yung miles per hour, to feet per second. So, convert muna natin. So, 60 miles per hour papunta sa feet per second. So, unahin natin yung ibabaw. So, ano ba yung conversion na pwede natin gamitin dito? So, we all know that in 1 mile, meron kang 1.609 kilometer. Okay? So, cancel na natin to. And then next, uh, from kilometers naman, so dali natin siya saan? Sa meters, okay? So in 1 kilometer, there is 1,000 meter. So from meters, saan natin siya pwede dalhin? Sa centimeters siguro, no? Para mapunta or ma-convert natin siya to inches. So in 1 meter, ilang centimeter meron siya? So di ba 100? Okay. So cancel ulit natin. Medyo mahaba pala yung conversion, ano? And then from cm, so to inches, so alam natin na in 1 inches, there is 2.54 cm. Okay, so cancel natin to. And then, bago pa pala tayo makapunta sa feet. 
So in one feet, there is 12 inches. Cancel, cancel. So okay na tayo sa ibabaw. Ang sunod, yung ilalim, yung R. So in one R, so diretso na natin to seconds ha, kasi medyo limited lang yung space. Meron tayong 3,600 seconds. So cancel, cancel. Ayan, so pindutin lang natin siya sa calculator. So that is 60. Yeah, 60 times 1.609 so times 1,000 and then multiply by 100 divided by 2.54 and then divided by 12 and then divided by 3,600 Okay, so yung 60 miles per hour mo meron kang 87.9812 So 87.9812 So fit per second Okay, so since uh, uniform na or pareho na yung mga units natin, uh, we can now solve for the required in this problem. So, drawing muna natin yung figure. So, sabi dyan, saan mo daw i-place yung uh, warning uh, device o yung yung warning torpedo. So, meron ka daw ditong trend. So, ganyan na lang guys ha. <laughs> so, for example, meron ditong uh, isang trend na naapigil. Ayan, stop. So, ang velocity nito, so ito is 0 feet per second. And then ito, yung unang trend natin, which is traveling a constant rate of 87.9812 feet per second. So, tumatakbo siya papunta dito. And then, let's say na dito na natin i-place yung warning torpedo. Ayan. Yung mismo tatamaan na niya. Almost. So, let's name this as our distance S. Ito yung hinahanap. Ano? Kung gaano kalayo yung uh, warning torpedo doon sa trend, sa second train na naatigil. Para hindi niya tamaan. And sinabi dito guys na meron siyang uniform deceleration. Ano? So sabi bumabagal siya. Ito, may word dito retarding or babagal. So impossible namang itong accelerating kasi from 87, so bibilis pa siya, ibig sabihin. So dapat, yung final velocity niya dito pagdating niya dito sa point na to is magsisiro na. At least rate na 2 feet per second squared. So ang hinahanap niya is ito. Okay, so ilatag muna natin yung mga available equation. So we all know, the final velocity initial plus acceleration times time. And then yung isa, S is equal to VOT plus 1 half of 80 squared and yung final equation that is bf squared is equals to initial velocity uh, plus 2as okay so ano ba yung mga available given natin dito so again meron nga tayong acceleration dito which is the deceleration na negative siya kasi nga sa pabagal na 2 feet per second squared so out of this uh, equation or available uh, formulas alin ba dyan yung pwede natin gamitin Okay, so ang mangyayari kasi guys, pagdating nitong trend na to dito, ano yung magiging final velocity niya? So kahit hindi given yan, alam natin that dapat yung trend na to, yung final velocity niya, once na-reach niya yung second train, so that should stop para hindi niya bagain, ano, hindi niya matamaan. Para maging nose to tail na yung ano, magkalapat na. Almost magkalapat. Okay, so between these three equations, ano may pwedeng gamitin? So, wala pa tayong time, ano, hindi natin alam. So ito, I think um uh, pinakamagandang gamitin na equation is yung third equation, di ba? Kasi nandiyan na lahat. So apply natin. So using this equation, the third equation, so the final velocity. So alam natin na dapat siya istitigil sa dulo. Pag na before siya makarating dito, with squared. Is equal to the initial velocity na 87.9812 feet per second squared. So ito namang 0 kapag ini-squared mo naman yan, so that is ano na rin. 0 pa din. So plus 2 and then yung deceleration niya na negative 2 feet per second squared and then multiply by s yung ano okay so ang mangyayari so this will be transposed to the other side to make it in positive dalhin lang natin dun so ayun uh, direct substitution na pala to uh, so yung s maahanap natin as 87.9812 squared all over uh, 2 times 2 so don't forget na is squared siya ayun so, pipito din lang sa LQ. Then, nag-substitution naman yan. So, 87. I think ito na yung sagot. Squared na lang natin to guys. So, divided by 4. Ayan. So, ang answer natin is 195. Saan ako nagkamali? So, tick. Ha! Anyway, guys. Ang uh, gawin natin, uh, ituturo ko sa inyo yung long uh, way of solving this. Kasi guys, pwede nyo rin kasing gamitin yung dalawang natitirang formula. Kaso ang mangyayari nga lang, mas mahaba. Pero supposedly dapat, pareho lang tayo dapat ng lalabas na sagot dito. 
Okay, so anyway, isulat pa rin natin. Maybe nagkamali lang ako dito ng input ng answer key. Kasi medyo inedit ko kasi yung module ni Sir Montilla. Uh, maaaring nagkamali ako ng lagay ng even. Ano? Iniba ako kasi ng content. Check ko na lang din. 1935.1728 So, that will be in fit. Okay. So, alternative solution. So, guys, just in case lang na nagkamali kayo ng equation na ginamit, pwede naman, ano? So, mangyayari, mangyayari lang dito. Pakakahanap kayo ng time if gagamitin nyo tong equation 1 and equation 2. So, ang unang mangyayari, if you use equation 1, so, alternative solution, ha? Eh, use equation 1. For example, nakalimutan mo itong equation na to na mas madali pa lang gamitin yun. Mas gusto mo nahihirapan ka. Use equation 1. So, that will be final velocity. This one. So, that is 0 is equals to initial velocity of 87.9812. So, hindi ko lang guys isusulat yung unit ha. So, minus deceleration of 2 and then multiply by the time t. So, we will have an answer for time. So, that will be 87.9812. So, divided by 2. So, the time required uh, for the train to stop is 43.9906 seconds. So, once na nakuha mo yung time, uh, this time, since may time ka na, pwede mo lang gamitin yung equation number 2. So, mayayari lang. So, mahanap mo na yung S kasi meron ka ng value ng time eh. So, initial velocity of 87.9812 then multiply by the time na 43.9906 and then uh, so plus 1 half of the acceleration which is negative 2 feet per second squared times the time squared. So, 43.9906 squared. So, ayan. So, pindutin lang natin. So, what will be S? So, that is 87.9812. Uh, so, times uh, 43.9906. And then, plus uh, 1 half. So, 2 raised to negative 1. Times negative 2. And then, times uh, 43.9906 squared. Okay. So, guys, kung napansin nyo, pareho lang yung lumabas. Ano? So, maaaring nagkamali lang talaga ako ng sulat dito sa... Uh, problem na to. Doon sa answer key. 1728. So, panghawaan na natin. So, type nyo na lang sa comment section kung meron ako nagkamali. Pero siguro, uh, imposible naman kasi using the alternative solution, pareho lang na lumabas na sagot. Okay? So, correct na lang natin to. So, this is supposedly 1935.1728. Okay, guys. So, I will give you some time to copy this problem. So, sabi nga, um, mas nagagets mo yan or mas tumatatak sa utak natin if kukopyahin nyo. Ano? So I'll give you around siguro 2 minutes is enough to copy the solution. So time check natin, 10.28, so 10.30, proceed tayo with the next problem. Okay, so let's proceed with the next problem. 
So ta- sana naman tama yung answer ko dito. <laughs> okay, so for problem number two, so basahin natin. An automobile moving at a constant velocity of 45 feet per second passes a gasoline station. Two seconds later, another automobile leaves the gasoline station and accelerates at the constant rate of 6 feet per second squared. So how soon will the second automobile overtake the first? Ayan, medyo maganda yung problem na ito. Okay, so first of all, uh, drawing muna natin siya. Ano? So ang drawing ko, ay gawin na lang natin na... So meron daw gasoline station. So bahay na lang. And house. So an automobile moving at a constant velocity of 45 feet per second gas- passes a gasoline station. So meron kang car A. Which is traveling at a constant velocity of uh, 45 feet per second passes a gasoline station. So dumaan lang siya. Ano, hindi siya tumigil, hindi siya nagpagas. Uh, dumaan. Traveling at 45 feet per second. So this is for car A. Ngayon, 2 seconds later daw. So, 2 seconds later. So, another automobile leaves the gasoline station. So, ito si... Uh, itong car B, nagpagas siya dito. Ano? So, umalis siya 2 seconds uh, later. So, after dumaan nitong sasakyan na to, so after 2 seconds, umalis na yung nagpagas, which is car B. Okay? So, ibig sabihin yan, so um- umalis pa lang siya, or he leaves the gasoline station, so, the initial velocity of this car being would be equals to 0 feet per second. So, why 0? Leaves pa lang eh. Leaves. Ayan. Kaalis pa lang. Or, he just started to leave this gasoline station. Ayan, ito magandang tanong. So, ano yung magiging time natin? So, ito, uh, say, let's just say na yung time, yung time ng car A, yung total travel time nila before uh, ma-overtake or it's before car B started to o- overtake car A. So, inim natin yung time na yun as time T. Okay guys, so ang question dito, so what will be the time of car B nung na-start na niyang ma-overtake itong si uh, car A? So sabi, uh, 2 seconds later, so ibig sabihin, after 2 seconds, so ang question dito guys, is it plus 2 or minus 2? So ayan, so this is one uh, of the most uh, challenging part siguro dito or yung tipong mapapaisip kayo ano nga yun? plus 2 or minus 2? so before uh, this is the same problem din na na-discuss sa amin ng instructor namin so iniisip ko plus 2 why plus 2? kasi 2 seconds later eh so after 2 seconds uh, so dapat additional 2 seconds to eh tama? pero kung iisipin mo so tama nga naman lagyan mo ng value so for example so ito kasi dapat siya ay minus. So, ba't daw minus? Sabi ko, ba't nga may? Ba't ba minus, ma'am? Di ba po dapat plus 2 siya? Kasi, after 2 seconds pa siya uman na eh. Umalis eh. So, try daw nating lagyan ng value yung time. So, for example, let's just say that yung time to mo is equals to 10 seconds. So, ito, 10 seconds. Okay? Dahil 10 seconds nang tumatakbo si car A nung abutan ni car B. Okay? So, kung isipin mo nga, tama naman. Kasi kung ito ay 10, so, ibig sabihin, 10 minus 2, 8 seconds. Kasi nga, dapat lamang kasi ng 2 seconds si car A. Lamang siya dapat kasi tumatakbo na siya ng ano eh, lamang siya, nung umalis si car B, after 2 seconds pa. So, ibig sabihin, yung travel time ni car A should be 2 seconds more compared dun sa car B. Okay, so, 2 seconds later. So, kung iisipin mong mabuti, yun nga, tama, hindi siya dapat pala plus 2. Kasi kung ito yung gagawin mong plus, so 12 seconds, ibig sabihin, matagal nang tumatakbo. So, if T plus 2 yan, so 10 plus 2, 12 seconds. 12 seconds na tumatakbo si Carby, which is impossible naman kasi nga, 2 seconds later. So, dapat, yung travel time ni Carby should be less by 2 seconds compared to Car A. So, yun. Yung pala yung exact explanation natin dyan. So, the correct answer for that is that is 10 uh, T minus 2, not plus 2. Okay? So, this is just an example. Ah, and, ibigay ko lang yung example na yun para at least mas ma, ano, ano, mas maunawaan. So, pawiin ko lang ulit. Ayan. So, nagkakaintindi tayo that yung time is time for car B should be T minus 2. Maganda, loko-loko na. Ito na. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so, ang mangyayari, ito is ano, yung initial position nila, then ito yung magiging ano nila. Magpapang-abot na sila.
Okay, so aside from that, uh, wala naman sinabi. So car A, so th- there is no indication there that car A is uh, accelerating. So he is, uh, ay, ito pala. It is indicated there that car A is traveling at a constant velocity. So the final and initial velocity is just the same for car A. While for car B, so sabi dyan, it accelerates at a constant rate of 6 feet per second. So guys, ang anong rin pala dito sa dynamics of rigid body, so dapat mong ma-interpret lahat ng word sa bawat sentence ng maayos para madali mo siyang ma-analyze. At the same time, uh, dito kasi sa mga problem na yan, hindi binibigay lahat yung given, so kailangan mo siyang i-analyze muna before mo makuha yung mga ibang given sa problem. Katulad yan, yung final velocity, so hindi naman sinabi doon sa car A, pero sabi, constant velocity. So yung car B mo, ah, car A mo, is traveling also at a final velocity of 45 feet per second. So acceleration of car B, so that is uh, 6 feet per second. Squared. Okay? So dito na lang natin siguro drawing. So final velocity of car A, lagyan natin ng A. So that is also equals to 45 feet per second. And then for car B, So the final velocity of car B, so still unknown, hindi naman natin alam. So acceleration is just the same. Okay? So ito, uh, meron din naman siyang dis- distance traveled. So ito yung isa sa mga relationship na pwede natin i-relate sa kanila. So SA and SB, or the distance traveled by car A and car B. So equals naman yan. Okay? So that is one of the equations na pwede natin magamit. Okay, so let's start first for car A. So, ang car A, isa lang naman yung magagamit nating equation. So, ano ba? Again, ano yung mga available equation natin? So, final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And then, Vf squared is equal to Vo squared plus 2As. And then, S is equal to Vot plus 1 half of At squared. Okay, so, by analyzing car A first, uh, final velocity, initial velocity, same. There's no acceleration. So, I think yung uh, third formula yung gagamitin natin. Ano? So we all know that yung S A is just equals to initial velocity of 45 multiplied by time A. So ilalat na lang natin siyang T para pareho silang T. Mas ko konti yung ano. So 1 half A T squared, I didn't include this since there's no acceleration or the acceleration for car A is equals to 0 because it is traveling at a constant velocity. So ito yung isa sa magiging equation natin. Okay, so this time punta naman tayo dun sa car B. So for car B, so I think, uh, Ano bang pwede natin equation na gamitin kay Carby? So for Carby, I believe the third equation ulit. So the distance traveled by Carby is equal to the initial velocity. So again, uh, I will just put it as zero, no? Kasi since it is starting from rest. And then plus one half of A, which is six, and then times T. So in TV natin, so that is T minus two squared. So that will be our equation number two. So, ang gawin mo, since yung distance traveled by car A is equals lang kay car B, equate mo lang yung dalawang equation. Ayan. So, 45T is equals to 1 half of 6 times T minus 2 squared. Okay. So, gamitan lang natin ng shift solve. So, 45T. So, ilag ko lang siyang x. So, alpha equals. So, 1 divided by 2 times 6 times T. So, x minus 2 squared. So, shift solve. So, lagyan lang natin ng positive value, no? Ayan. So, lumabas na value ng time is 18.787. 18.787. Pero ang tinatanong dito is how soon will the second automobile overtake the first car? So, yung TV yung tinatanong. Ano? So, to get the time traveled by car B, so that is T minus 2, or minus 2 lang to, that is 16.787 seconds. Okay, so, ayan, tumama naman doon sa answer key. So this time guys, uh, i-copy nyo muna, tapos ipapakita ko sa inyo yung alternative solution ulit dito. So depende yan sa nag-a-analyze. Marami kasing, ayun nga, meron pang isang way para isolve to. So depende sa nag-a-analyze ng problem. Sige, uh, copy muna ulit for 3 minutes, 2 minutes.
Okay, so guys, ito naman yung isa pang way para masolve mo itong problem na ito. So pwede rin kasi guys, ang gawin natin, since alam natin that yung car A, uh, lamang siya ng 2 seconds eh. Kung baga, after 2 seconds, dun palang nag-start tumakbo si car B. So dito sa time span na to, uh, saan ba natin? So maybe, I'll just remove this first. And we all know that yung acceleration ni car A, so equals siya sa 0. So at the time of 2 seconds, uh, sabihin natin, ito na yung location ni car A. So, at time 2 seconds, ito yung naging distance traveled niya. So, gitna na lang ng sasakyan. Okay? So, yung distance traveled, so sabihin natin, SA at 2 seconds. So, ano lang yan? Uh, SVT. O, oh, diba? Alam natin that uh, velocity is what's the distance S over T. Or using this formula, since walang acceleration, when you solve for S, diba equals lang yan sa VT. Or equals to, so ito is for the time 2 seconds, ha? So, 45 multiplied by 2 seconds, so that SA2 is 90 meters. So, ahead siya ng uh, 90 meters away dun sa car B mo. And then, dun palang mag-start tumakbo si uh, car B. Meaning, so, eto, tumatakbo na ulit siya. And at this point, let's just say, let's just say na dito sila nagpagdagpo. Ayan. So, this is again your car A. So, eto. So, this will be your car B. Okay, so again, this one, this is another distance traveled by car A. So, denote natin siya as SA. And then, ito, coming from this point, yung initial start point ng dalawa, mula dito. So, I will name this as my distance traveled by car B, or yung SB natin. So, with this equation, or this figure, so, makikita natin that yung SA mo, uh, plus 90, is equals to SB. Okay, so this will be my equation number one. So, ang mangyari kasi ngayon dito, yung time traveled from this point up to this point, so ilat ko siya as t, okay? From this point, ng car A, from this to this point, up to this point. So that is the time, t. Okay? And coming from this uh, point, from the gasoline station, hanggang sa location ni car A, na nagpang-abot sila, so sabihin ko na lang dito as time t. Para kakunti lang yung announce natin. Okay, so, ano ba gusto nyo unahin natin? Ito naman, eh, ganun din, eh. Uh, itong SA mo. So, to solve for SA using this equation, the third equation. So, SA is just equals to the initial velocity ni car B. So, constant naman yung velocity niya. Multiply by time T. So, I will let this as my equation number 2. And then, for this car B, so that will be equals lang sa, since may acceleration siya. So, yun din, ano. So, SB mo is just equals to, so, initial velocity, again, wala siyang initial, so starting at 0 plus one half of the acceleration of car B, which is 6, and then multiply by T squared. So yung T dito guys, uh, hindi na to yung time na i-consider natin. Ito na eh, kabuuan eh, kasi yung another solution yung gagawin natin. So ano ba to? So this is T squared. Okay, so this will be equation number 3. So if we're going to substitute that in this equation, so magiging equation natin is 45T, so substitute ko lang to, SA, papunta dito and then plus 90. So, isulat na natin, ano? So, using equation 1 with 2 and 3. Okay? So, this equation, SA, so that is 45T, and then plus 90 is equals to SB, or 0, so plus 1 half of 6 times T squared. Ayan. So, ganun lang ulit. Calculate na ulit natin. Ship solve na lang. Para mas mabilis. So, 45X plus 90 and then uh, equals to 1 half so 2 raised to negative 1 para maging 1 half times 6 times squared syntax error <laughs> tama naman plus e maginawag natin yung value ayan so the time t is uh, 16.787 so wala na siyang minus 2 no kasi that is applicable for the first solution since pinauna nga natin, or kinumpute na natin yung ano ni car A at 2 seconds. So, ibig sabihin at this point, this point ng car A at saka dito, so sabay na silang ano. Ito na yung parang naging consideration natin. So, inad lang natin yung distance 90. Okay, so guys, uh, please copy. I will give you again 2 minutes.
Okay guys, so for the third problem, so basahin natin. So a ship being launched slides down the ways with a constant acceleration. It takes 4 seconds to slide the first meter. How long will it take to slide down the ways if their length is 900 meter? So drawin muna natin. So meron ka daw bang barko? Ayan. So ang muna scenario guys dito is that, sabi, uh, it is uh, sliding at a constant acceleration. So ibig sabihin yung acceleration is constant. So it takes 4 seconds, so yung A natin, so scenario A. So the time required to slide down the first meter, so ibig sabihin nito, 1 meter lang. So the time required for that is 4 seconds. Okay. So initial position, final position. So lagyan natin flag, para magbukaan namang ship. Okay, so for letter B, so how long would it take to slide down the way if their length is 900 meter? So coming from the same position, initial position, so paano naman daw kapag 900 meter? So medyo ano ko na lang yung drawing yan, kasi kung 900 meter yan, baano naman yan? Sa malayo. So ito na lang yung 900 meters. So that's 900 meters. So ang tanong dito, ano yung time na yan? Okay? So I believe sa scenario A, dyan natin makukuha yung mga acceleration. Okay? Tama, yung acceleration. So, ano yung acceleration dito? So, sabi nga, constant acceleration. So, yung acceleration mo kay uh, scenario A, so that will be the same acceleration for scenario B. Okay, so, equal sa natin yan. So, for case A muna. So, the required is the acceleration. So, again, latag mo muna ulit yung mga equation na gagamitin mo or yung formula para at least uh, madepende mo dyan kung alin yung gagamitin mo equation. So, S, si what, one half squared. And then yung botox. EF squared plus initial squared plus 2AS. Ayan. So guys, uh, take note of this keyword. So sabi, a ship being launched. So being launched. So ibig sabihin, uh, sa lal lalarga pa lang yung bangka. Ano? It will just start to slide. So ibig sabihin yan, the initial velocity for case A is equal to 0. Same as for uh, initial velocity ni case B or scenario B. So, zero initial velocity, ang hinahanap ko lang naman is, ano, I think uh, the best equation to use is this uh, second equation. Yung S equals initial velocity times time plus one half eighty squared. So, makakakuha tayo dito ng acceleration. Since given yung time, given yung initial velocity, nasabi nga natin siya na zero kasi maglalunch pa lang. And then, given yung distance niya. Okay, so, S equals to initial velocity time plus one half of eighty squared. So, what is S? So, that is one meter. So, ito, this will be zero since being launched pa lang. So, one half of the acceleration, so this is the required, and then the yung time mo is 4 seconds, 4 squared. So, what is the acceleration? So, 2 over, so tama ba? 2 over 16, uh, what is the unit? Meter per second squared. Okay, so since meron na tayong acceleration, uh, we can now proceed with the case B. So, mahanap na natin yung required. So, para kay case B, uh, ha? SBO, one half eighty squared. I think, ano rin oh, Ito rin yung equation na gagamitin natin. Though, pwede mo rin gamitin yung iba, pero mas mahaba yung solution, kagaya nung sa first example natin. So, diretso na lang natin para mabilis. So, S is kasi initial velocity times time plus one half of 80 squared. So, knowing that yung kanyang distance travel is 900, so again, yung initial velocity mo, this will be equals to zero, kasi being launched ulit yan. So, plus one half of the acceleration, which is 2 over 16. So, mahanap natin yung time. So, ito is na squared. So, the time required, so manipulate mo lang yan, so 900. So, I can cancel out this one times 16, and then square root of this. So, what is the time? So, pindutin nyo lang galing sa calc -U. So, 900 times 16, then square root of the answer. So, 120 seconds. Okay, so 120 seconds. So, uh, minutes lang siya. So, 1 minute, uh, 60 seconds. So, tama na siya ay 2 minutes. Okay, so, again, uh, please copy. I'll give you 2 minutes to copy the problem. Oop, yeah.
Okay, so problem number four under linear translation. So, basahin natin. A driver traveling at 50 miles per hour sees a wall at a certain distance ahead. The driver applies the brake immediately, so the perception time there is 3 seconds. So, masyadong matagal yata ito. Ano? Baala sing itong nagda-drive. And begins to slowing the vehicle at 6 meter per second squared. So, kung makikita nyo dyan, guys, sabi, slowing the vehicle. So, the 6 meter per second squared is deceleration. If the distance from the stopping point to the wall is 12 meter, how far was the car from the wall upon perception? So, meron daw uh, 12 meter distance nung tumigil yung sasakyan. So, tinatanong dito, how far was the car from the wall upon perception? Okay, so, let's go! So, again guys, i-drawing muna natin yung figure, tapos i-analyze ulit natin. So, initially, let's say na ito yung car. So, this is traveling at 50 miles per hour. So, the initial velocity is 50 miles per hour. Ako, nakameters na naman. Ah, sige, i-convert muna natin pala guys, para at least wala na tayong problema. So, 50 miles per hour. So, again, uh, in one mile, there is 1.609 kilometer. Ano bang unit nga? Meter. And then, in uh, one kilometer, there is 1,000 meters. So, cancel, 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 cancel. So, for hour, so, hour is, one hour is 3,600 seconds. Okay, so, what is the equivalent value of that in meter per second? So, 50 times 1, times 1.609, times 1,000, and then divided by 3,600. So that is uh, 22.3472. Uh, 3.472. Check lang natin ha. Uh, 50 miles, tama. Tama. Tama naman. So meter per second. So this is the initial velocity. Okay, so that is traveling at 22.3472 meter per second. So the driver can see a wall at a certain distance ahead. So meron nga daw ditong pader. So, ang sabi nga dyan, if the distance from the stopping point to the wall is 12. So, dito siya banda tumigil. Ano? So, sa gitna na lang natin kunin yung mga reference point. So, that is 12 meters. So, ang final velocity niya dito. So, this is uh, 0 meter per second. Uh, the driver applies the brake immediately. Perception time is 3 seconds. So, ibig sabihin guys, uh, Before niya i-apply yung brake, uh, meron kasi ditong time na 3 seconds, yung perception time. Ang alam ko kasi, less than 1 seconds yung uh, average na perception time if alert driver ka. Pero since ito ay siguro ay dasing or inaantok, so 3 seconds pa siya bago niya apakan yung brake. So ito, nakapag-travel na to. So let's say na ito yung S1 natin. So yung S1, compute mo siya. So wala naman sinabing bumili siya, acceleration. So constant velocity naman yan. So yung final velocity niya dito is the same lang din. So, 22.34 Nagpapasmado yung ano Naglo-loko siya Pasmado problems <laughs> Wait lang <laughs> Yan, wala na Let's go Okay, so sorry about that interruption So, nasa tayo So, 22.347 to rin Yung kanyang final velocity Ngayon, upon the application of the brake, so gawin ko na lang to as color green para at least may distinction siya. So, initial velocity niya agad dito. So, ito na yung uh, for the distance traveled before siya mag-stop. So, I will name this as my S sub 2. So, the initial velocity there before he applied the brake, 22.3472 meter per second. And yung final velocity niya nga, ito siya. Uh, 0 meter per second. So, ang acceleration niya dito or yung deceleration is negative 6 meter per second squared. So, anong hinahanap? How far was the car from the wall upon perception? So, ito. Yung kabuuan na yan, yan yung hinahanap. So, mga natin siya as S. Okay? So, first, let's start first with the first scene. So, before yung perception time or yung distance travel during the perception time before niya apakan yung brake. So, yung S1 mo, so that is equals lang kay uh, so, let ulit natin yung mga formulas. So, BF, walang kamatayang equation. BF, BO, plus AP. S, B, O, T, plus 1 half, A, T squared. So, para masaulo nyo rin agad. Ano? So, lagi mo lang siyang isulat. Hanggang sa masaulo mo. So, again, uh, ito lang yung gagamitin natin. Yung second. Since wala naman siyang acceleration. So, patay na siya. So, that is 
initial velocity so 22.3472 multiply by the time so that is 3 seconds so let's use the calculator so tago na nga natin to shift store so alpha times 3 so that is 67.0417 meters okay so yung S2 natin so may deceleration na siya this same equation so initial velocity so 22.3472 uh, wala pala tayong time tama walang time so hindi hindi erase erase wala pa tayong time so kunin muna natin yung time using the first equation kasi alam natin that the final velocity will be equal to 0 so 0 hindi ko na isusulat yung ano ha para ma-minimize space so using the first equation this one so 0 is equals to initial velocity so 22.3472 tapos uh, minus since deceleration siya 6 times the time p so yung time dito sa span na to so wala up asing time so in time natin, so divide mo lang yan, so 22.3472, or yung alpha, divided by 6. So that is 3.72, dalawa pa, 4, 5. 4, 5, 6. Now since we have now the time, so we can now solve yung S natin. So gusto nyo bang gamitin to? Hindi kasi masyadong napapansin eh. Sige. So gamitin natin yung third formula. So 0 squared is equal sa initial velocity squared. 22.3472 squared and then plus 2 times negative 6 <laughs> well, para saan pa yung time na kinuha natin so S2 to ah so check lang natin kung tatama kayo naman para lang din tayo para kasi nasululungkot yung isang ano hindi kasi nagagamit 3, 4, 7, 2 squared dapat pala dinaretso na natin to ano So, 41.6164. 6164 uh, meters. So, check natin dito ha. So, balikan natin yung first equation. So, check. So, using S2, yung VOT. So, that is 22.3472 times the time. Yun ang palabas natin. 3.7245. Then, plus one half of the acceleration, which is negative 6, times the time na 3.7245 squared. Ayan. So, check lang natin if pareho. So, 22. So, ito nga ba si alpha? Ayan. So, times, di ko pala na-store. 3.7245. So, guys, ugaliin nyo yung nag-store ha para at least hindi na ipindot ng pindot. Tsaka, mas accurate yun kasi nakatago lahat yung value. Times 3.7245 squared. Ayan. So, pareho naman. So, may kating decimal places lang na difference. Pero anyway, napakaliit na nun. So, pareho. Okay, so I believe nakuha na natin lahat. So, the total distance or the distance of the car from the wall upon perception. So, that is S. So, i-add lang natin lahat. So, 67.0417 plus 41.6165 and then plus 12. So, what will be the answer? So, answer ayan na yan. So, plus 67 point zero four one plus twelve so one twenty point six five anyway uh think sa uh, rounding off na lang yung nagkaroon ng ano six five eight two so pa check na lang guys ha kung bakit one twenty points kasi kung tinitin mo kasi dito two decimal places na baka all throughout the solution two decimal places kaya ganito yung nagkuha nating sagot ganito yung nasa answer key pero I think tama naman to ano so guys pa type na lang sa comment section below kung May nagkamali ba tayo or two decimal places lang yung ginamit siya.
Okay, so free falling body, so another feature for this. Oh,